hello as quiet as we can. Now we're going to say it loud. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as loud as we can. Hello. And now we're going to say it slowly. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as slow as we can. Hello. And now we're going to say fast. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as fast again. Hi. And now we'll say it nicely. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as nice as we can. Hi, everybody. Lots of happy faces. It's so nice to see you all today. Aw, you know, today we're so cold and wintry outside and windy. And no, it's, it was the kind of day I thought, oh, I don't want to get out of bed. I just want to pull the covers up over my head and stay asleep and maybe sleep for the whole winter. Just like, like some animals do. They sleep for the winter. And we call that hibernating. So... I don't know if you guys feel like hibernating, but I think it's that kind of a day. But I'm glad you came to story time because I have some good stories to share with you about animals hibernating. And the first one I'm going to read to you is one I really like a lot. And it's called Sleep, Big Bear Sleep. And I like this one a lot because it has, it has some good rhyming in it. And it's, it's about this bear who... He doesn't hear very well. And the wind is trying to tell him it's time to sleep. It's winter. But Bear doesn't understand what the wind is saying. And he gets all, everything all mixed up. So this is Sleep, Big Bear Sleep by Maureen Wright. And Will Hillenbrand is our illustrator. He drew the pictures. Sleep. Big Bear Sleep. And you can see it's kind of a, a bleak, wintry landscape. It's a little fuzzy. And you can see there's, there's not any leaves on the trees and everything is kind of gray. It's just the kind of day like, like we're having today. And it is windy. And if you've been outside today, you know that wind is is whoo, it's strong. So here we go. Old man winter from a storm cloud spied his big bear friend in the countryside. He leaned to the earth and he softly sighed. Sleep, big bear, sleep. But Big Bear didn't hear very well. He couldn't sleep in his den in the dell. He thought he heard as the twilight fell, drive a Jeep, Big Bear, drive a Jeep. So Big Bear yawned as he drove around in a Jeep on a road just south of town. So he thought the, the wind said, jeep, not sleep. And those are rhyming words, aren't they? They kind of sound the same, sleep, jeep. So you can see why Bear might have gotten a little confused. But after a while, he spotted in a park, an old man whispered as it grew very dark, sleep, big bear, sleep. But Big Bear didn't hear very well. He, he couldn't sleep in his den in the dell. He thought he heard as the dry leaves fell, sweep, Big Bear, sweep. So sweep 
and sleep sound the same, don't they? So Big Bear went to a house down the street and he slept each room so nice and neat. There he is and there he's sweeping with a broom. But after a while, he yawned again and old man Winter warned his friend. Sleep, Big Bear, sleep. But Big Bear didn't hear very well. He couldn't sleep in his den in the dell. He thought he heard as the shadows fell. Leap, Big Bear, leap. That means to jump. I see Misha's laughing. He thinks that's silly. Leap rhymes with sleep. So Big Bear found a frog he knew and played leapfrog while the cold wind blew. Till all at once he fell to the ground. The wind through the trees was the only sound. And old man Winter said with a frown, what did he say? Sleep, Big Bear, sleep. But Big Bear didn't hear very well and he couldn't sleep in his den in the dell. He thought he heard as the darkness fell, dive deep, Big Bear, dive deep. So, Big Bear padded to a clear blue lake, finding hard to stay awake. He's yawning, he's getting tired. But now he thinks he has to dive into the water. Oh, the book goes this way for this page. There he goes, down, down, down. He's diving deep. He dove in deep and he swam to the shore. He'd never been so tired before. His head dropped down and he let out a snore. And old man Winter said once more, Sleep, Big Bear, sleep. But Big Bear didn't hear very well. He couldn't sleep in his den in the dell. He thought he heard as the snowflakes fell. Climb a mountain, sleep. Climb a mountain, steep, Big Bear, steep. So a steep mountain is a, is a very tall mountain. So. Steep and sleep sound the same. So Big Bear trudged to the mountain top where the cold wind blew and the temperature dropped. Brrr. He sat on a stump on the highest spot and he wished for a blanket and a fold up cot. He's cold and tired and he wants to go to sleep. And that's what the wind is telling him to do, but. He gets all confused. Then whew, he stumbled back down with his eyes half shut. So tired he didn't know which end was up. Old man yelled while shaking his head. Hey there, bear, did you hear what I said? It's winter time. Now go to bed. I think he understood that time. Big bears were, Big Bear's eyes were droopy and red. Well, you could have told me before, he said. He lumbered nearby to his cozy den. He rubbed his eyes and he yawned again. He put on his PJs and blew out the light. And fluffing his pillow, he said, Good night. And so finally, Big Bear 
understood what the wind was trying to tell him the whole time. It's time for you to sleep, bear. It's winter time. It's time to hibernate. And I've got a good song to sing about that, guys. And it's called, Are You Sleepy? And it might help you remember that bears and other animals like to sleep in the winter time. That reminds me, you might, I don't know if you guys can see, there's something back here in my, in my workroom. And there's a sign and it says, shh, do not disturb. Bear is hibernating. Come back in the spring. Huh, I'm gonna have to peek back there. I'm gonna peek and see. Arr! Oh, look at that, can you see? There is a bear, and look at that. He's hibernating. I don't think he wanted me to disturb him, but now that he sees that you're all here, I think he does wanna say hi, so. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Are you going to hibernate? And maybe Bear would like to sing our song with us. So this is how it goes. Are you sleepy? Are you sleepy? Little Bear, little Bear. Winter time is coming. Winter time is coming very soon very soon. Maybe you guys can help me with this. And I'll say the first line and then you say it after me. So I'm gonna go, are you sleepy? Now you sing it. Are you sleepy? And I'm gonna say, little bear. You say, little bear. Winter time is coming. Winter time is coming very soon very soon. I hope you sang along. Now here's another, we can sing another verse about it. Find a cave, find a cave. Little bear, little bear. Time for hibernation, time for hibernation. Go to sleep, go to sleep. Aww. Are you ready to go back to bed, Bear? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna let him go back to sleep in his in his hiding space here. So there you go. See, maybe he can just watch. I'll just let him there and he can watch. I'll put a little clip here. I don't know if you can see him there, but he'll he'll join us for the next story. Are you guys ready for another story? I have another good one. Let's see, this one, hmm, oh gosh, I don't know. This one's kind of funny. I think I'll read this one next. This one is called, Go Sleep in Your Own Bed. And this is written by Candace Fleming and Lori Nichols drew the pictures. So I think this is funny. It's really not about a, it's not about a bear that's sleeping, but lots of other animals are sleeping. So. Go sleep in your own bed. Snuggled in, snuggled down, it's bedtime on the farm. Toddled to his sty with a waddledy jog. But when he plopped down, moo, who do you think he found. You know who he saw? Oh, it was Cal. And Cal said, oh, get up, squealed pig. Go sleep in your own bed. So the cow was sleeping in pig's muddy bed. Well, Oh, hayseeds, lowed the cow, as she tromped to her stall with a clumpity clomp. But when she snuggled down, bark, 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 bark. who do you think she found? Chicken! And cow 
Owl said, get up, bellowed Cow, and go sleep in your own bed. Oh, fluff and feathers, clucked Hen, and she scraggled to her coop with a peckety droop. But when she nestled down, nay, who do you think she found? Who do you think was in her bed? Nay! Oh! Get up, squawked hen. Go sleep in your own bed, she said to the horse. So, horse wandered away. Oh, whoa is me, winkered the horse. And he shambled to his stable with a clippity clop. But when he settled down, <laughs> what do you think he found? <laughs> what could it be? What could it be? <gasps> oh, sheep, get up, whinnied the horse. Go sleep in your own bed. Nay. Oh, bother bleated the sheep, and she stumbled to her pen with a trippity slump. But when she huddled down, a roof, a roof, who do you think she found? Maybe you can see here. Roof, roof, roof. Oh, sure enough, the dog. Get up, bad the sheep. Go sleep in your own bed. Bah, bah. Oh, oh, woof, bark, and bellyache whined the dog, and he padded to his kennel with a sniffity drag. And when he flopped down, meow, meow, who do you think he found? <laughs> Get up, woof the dog, woof, woof, go sleep in your own bed. There goes the cat. Meow, oh, drat, meow the cat, and she tiptoed to her spot with a pittery pat right there on the porch. But when she cuddled down, she heard a sound. Here, kitty, 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 here, kitty, kitty. And who do you think she found? She found a little girl. And the little girl said, oh, there you are. Come sleep in my bed. And there they did together, Aww. all snuggled in and snuggled down. It was bedtime on the farm. Aww. I like that story. <laughs> Do any of you have a kitty cat that sleeps in your bed? I used to. I used to. It was nice. Kept me, kept my toes warm. All right, let's see. I think I have another little stand-up rhyme that we should do, guys. And it's a nice little rhyme that you guys probably know. Where is my, where is my little cheater sheet? Here it is. We're going to do Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear, just to get a chance to stand up and, and move around a little bit. So if you want to stand up and join me, we're going to go. Teddy bear, teddy bear, turn around. <laughs> teddy bear, teddy bear, touch the ground. Down we go. Teddy bear, teddy bear, reach up high. Teddy bear, teddy bear, on your tippy toes, touch the sky. Teddy bear, teddy bear, bend down low. Teddy bear, teddy bear, touch your toes. Teddy bear, teddy bear, go to bed. Teddy bear, teddy bear, 
Oh, rest your head. Teddy bear, teddy bear, turn around. Now sit down without a sound. And we'll do one more short little story and then we'll make our, our craft for today. So let's see what we have. I have, I like this one. This time of year, I think this is a, this is just, it's not a, uh, uh, well, it's not a silly story or anything. It's just a, I just think it's a really pretty story that talks about the, the changing season and it's called Every Autumn Comes the Bear and it's written by Jim Arnosky. And so this is about what a bear sees as the season changes from autumn or fall over to winter. So we're past the middle of fall and autumn and we're heading towards winter. We're just a few weeks away. So every autumn comes the bear. And I really think our bear likes this one too. So I hope you do. Here we go. <clears throat> there is a wooded hill behind our farm. Here's the hill and it's in the woods. You can see there really aren't any leaves on the tree. trees. It's a wild and rugged place with as many rocks as there are trees. Every autumn after the leaves have fallen, a bear shows up. He walks out on the cliff where the ravens perch. The big black birds are ravens. He growls into the bobcat's lair. Looks like she growls back too. The bear follows every trail, here's the trail, just to see where it might lead. Do you ever walk on a trail through the forest? He drinks cold water from the spring. Looks like a raccoon is sleeping inside of a log, watching, hoping the bear doesn't see her. He claws a tall, straight tree. So he, he sharpens his claws on the bark of the tree. The other animals hide from the bear, but he knows they are there. He dares watching. He smells the scent of a fox. <laughs> Every animal must have its own special smell that the bear knows. He hears a grouse bursting into flight. And when the hill is white with snow, the bear climbs to the highest rock and he looks out over the treetops. And then, searching amid the hilltop boulders, he finds a den and he crawls inside. And there, Nestled against the cold rock with only fat and fur to keep him warm. He sleeps all winter long. And we call that hibernating. Did you guys like that one? Yes, 
Oh, good. You know, um, an interesting thing I learned about this author, his name is Jim Arnosky. And uh, Miss Tina, who works here at the library, if you remember her, she told me that Jim Arnosky used to live not too far from here in Pennsylvania. And as I read this book, I realized that this looks a lot like the place, maybe some of you have gone to a place called the Pinnacle or Pulpit Rock to go for a walk. And it's a place where you can climb over the rocks and you can look out over the farms and the valley. And I think that's maybe where Jim Arnosky made the setting for this story because that's around the area where he used to live. So a lot of the animals that we saw in here are actually animals we see in Pennsylvania. Did you know we have bear in Pennsylvania? I yeah, hope you guys can do. get out for a walk in the forest, follow the trails. And maybe you'll see a fox or a grouse or some ravens. So, okay, well, did you guys like every, every autumn comes the bear? This is a pretty old story, but I like it. It's nice. I think it's a very pretty story. Are you guys ready to make a, a hibernating, some hibernating animals? Let me get my craft down here. So this is what we're going to make today. So we're going to make, um, I don't know what these animals are hibernating in this, this lair. It could be a bobcat. It could be a family of bears. So let me show you how to do this. Have fun making it. So, let's see. We have, let me hold that up so we can see what we need. Okay. Well, the first thing we need is our, we, I used a blue, a blue uh, background for my, for my background color because I thought it reminded me of the dark blue sky of the winter. So I have blue paper for that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is make some, some triangle shaped trees. So I have, I have two shades of green. You can do it with one shade. On this one, I just used, I just used one, all the same shade of green. But I'm going to use two shades this time because I think it'll be kind of a nice effect. So to do that, you can either draw your triangles if that's easier. So maybe you want to just draw some triangle shapes on your paper and cut them out. Actually, so those are going to be really huge trees, but that's okay. So I'm going to cut it out. Maybe I'll turn my camera down this way so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm cutting out some triangles. And after, I'm, those are really big trees, so I've got to cut the bottom off so they're not too big there. So now, I ha because I layered my paper, I have, I have two trees, okay? And I'm going to cut out, you can, you can just, I mean, you can just sort of go from where you had that last point and just make another line going the other way. It's up to you if you want to just draw them first, whatever's easier. I'll cut off the bottom so they're not too long. So I have four trees. Maybe I'll do one more set of trees. Actually, I could take this little scrap and make two more small trees. Okay, now I have plenty of trees. So I'm going to let's see. If let's see there. I'm going to take my trees and just kind of figure out where I want them to be on my paper. I need to get them closer here. It takes me a minute to get to figure this out. Let's see. All right, so I'm gonna lay my triangles out. So for you, I'll lay them this way. Figure out where I want my trees to be. And I, that's why I like to do the two colors because then you see them on top of each other. I'll put 
couple in there. It doesn't matter where you put them. It can be anywhere. Okay, that's pretty good like that. So now I have those in place. So now I'm going to glue them down. And I just lift it up and glue a little section. You can always come back and glue more later. But I just lift it up and figure out where it should be. Okay. All right. And then you can always move things around if you decide that that's not exactly where you want it. So there's, I've got my forest. I've got my forest. And the next thing I'm going to do is take a paper plate and I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to cut it along that fold. Okay. And then after I cut that, then you can see on the inside of the paper plate, there's kind of a ring there. So I'm going to cut it out along that, the, the smaller circle. I don't know if you can see how I'm doing that. The light doesn't look right here. Okay, so I, this I don't need that little piece. Actually, I'm going to use that to make my, my eyes. But now this is what I have left, okay? And that's going to be my lair or my cave. So I'm going to set that where... I, actually, I'm going to use this piece for something else first. I'm going to take my, my plate my edge, and I'm going to take the black paper and I'm going to, I'm going to line that up along the bottom and I'm going to trace around there. I'll, I'll use a white paper so you can see it. Now I'm going to just do a little outline of that plate. So, traced it, and I'm going to cut that out. Okay. And that is going to be the dark part of my, my glare. I'm going to lay that along the bottom edge of my trees. Okay. So, I'm going to glue that on. Now I have that with my trees. And then I'm going to take the paper plate section that I cut out and I'm going to glue that right along that black section. So I'm going to run, I'm going to, I think it's easier to just glue along the, the black right along that top circle edge. And I'm going to take my, my plate and I'm going to glue that in place too. If you want if you have regular glue, that might be a little better. Like I have that too. So look, yeah, it's not going to stick. I'm going to put some along my, the edge of my paper plate. I think I you need a little bit more glue to get the ridges to stick. Okay. So, okay, now, now we have our cave, and now we have to make some eyes peeking out at us. So, I'll, I'll show you what I did. I just took my, my inside piece of my plate, and we're almost to the fun part. I took some black crayon for the eyes. Let's see. You, can, you know what you could do too that would look really neat is make them yellow. Actually, that would be nice. I'm going to do like glowing eyes. I'm going to try some of those. I'm going to do some yellow. So I drew, I drew my yellow eyes and now I'm going to cut those out. Because 
sometimes fox eyes and if you if your headlights hit them on the on the road they, they sometimes look yellow so i don't maybe i'll even put a little black dot there in the center yeah how's that look how's that look? i don't know if you can see that that looks pretty cool but you can just do plain black eyes too i'll show you how to make those there i just stuck that in place so to do that i'm just going to make some black eye shapes and then maybe I'll just draw a little line around there that looks like the number eight, doesn't it? And I'm going to cut that out. Oh, I have magnets stuck to my scissors. Okay. And then I'm going to glue that on. So now there's different eyes inside the cave peeking out. What kind of animal could it be? So you can put it, maybe you want to make a whole family of creatures inside your cave. And now we have one more thing to do because it's winter time. So we're going to add some snow. And to do the snow, we're going to use, I, I, think, the, I think glue stick will work just fine, but... I used uh, Elmer's glue, the liquid glue. And I'm going to put the glue. Oh, you know what else you could do? I forgot to say, you could color your cave. You could color it gray with a gray crayon. That will make it look a little more, a little more uh, natural maybe. So it looks like gray rocks. I'll just color some gray on there. There, now it looks a little bit more like rock. And then, now I'm going to put my, my, my glue on in spots. And I'm going to have it be on the trees and in the sky. You might want yours in the sky because as the snow falls down, it lands in the trees. I'm going to put some on my cave too. And maybe some on the ground around where the bears are or the animals are sleeping. So you just take your cotton balls. It's kind of fun to break your cotton apart and make it fluffy before you stick it on. And then just find places where you want it to be. I bet you guys will put a lot of snow on your pictures. Because who's ready for snow? Who's ready for winter time? Could I heard that there might be a little snow. I see some thumbs up there. Emily and Tate and Alex are ready for snow. I think Misha's ready. He's excited. <laughs> Riley's got her thumb up. <laughs> So here's my, this is what I did so far, but I would, you know, if I were going to keep on going, I would keep working on it till I got it just the way I wanted it to be. So if you put a lot of snow on your picture, maybe that means we'll get a lot of snow. Okay, well, I guess that's about, that's about all we have for today. So does anybody have any questions or fix my camera? I guess while you guys are finishing up, I'll just show you. I have a couple other books uh, about winter. This mm -hmm. one is a little bit longer, too long for story time. It's called The Bear's Winter House. It's a cute one, and it's yeah. all about a bear and his friends and getting ready for the for the winter and getting looking he's sleeping here in his in his cozy his cozy bear den. So this is a nice one. I just thought it was a little long for us to read. And then uh, another good one is The Bear's Autumn. This is a really neat kind of quiet story like the other, the bear, every autumn comes the bear. But this one, um, the pages, the colors are Should I read another dark. story while you're working? 
Are you guys? Yes, Miss Chris. Yeah, well, you like that? Okay, keep working and I'll read you this one. You can look up every once in a while to see the pictures. This one's called The Bear's Autumn. These are rotten. And this is by Kizaburo Tahima. It's really pretty. I think the way the artist did this is they used like a they used a, a, a wood carving and they printed it. The autumn mountains of Hokkaido, the northern island of Japan. Mountains are bears. Are aflame with beautiful colors. The clear sky seems to spread forever. The chilly autumn wind comes blowing, ooh, and a jay calls. Something dark is moving about in the forest. There's a little one too. It's a mother and a baby brown bear. Do you see them here? It's a mother bear and her baby. They're eating something to fatten up for their long winter sleep. So that's what the animals do. They eat and they eat and they eat so that they can sleep all winter and never take a, a, an eating break. We have to wake up and eat every day, but they can sleep. Mother and baby bear eating tasty, ripe, wild grapes. Mmm, who likes grapes? Mmm, I like to eat grapes. Baby bear with his light body is a better tree climber than his mother. I wonder what I can see from the top of this tree, he wonders. So he climbs up. He's, he's littler. His mom has trouble because she's so big and heavy. But he can get right up there. From high up in the tree, Baby Bear sees sparkling white mountains in the distance. And he sees a beautiful river. When you climb up high, you can look out and see just like the bear in our other story did when he went on top of those rocks. I'm going to fish for salmon in that river tonight, thinks Baby Bear excitedly. It would be his very first trip to fish for salmon. Did you know that bears eat fish too? Oh, isn't that a pretty picture? There's the river. Look at the sky. I think the sun is setting. It's getting close to dark. Yep, there it is. There's the moon. When the sunset fades and the moonlight shines on the forest, mother and baby bear come to the edge of the river. Will they come? Will they really come? Asked baby bear. And mother bear says, yes, of course they will. I like the moon reflecting in the water. Have you been outside to see the full moon? It's called a beaver moon. Beaver? I never heard of beaver moon. Yeah, it's a beaver moon. I saw that. I forget where I saw that. Yeah. Beaver moon. Yeah, it's a full moon. I think it was the full moon was the other night, but it's still very bright outside right now. Oh, here they come. Sparkling white shadows appear one after another, swimming up the river. It's kind of hard for you guys to see, but there's salmon in there. It's a school of salmon. And Mother Bear gets ready to jump. She dives right in. Oh, I bet that water's cold. We don't like to swim this time of year, do we? Brr. Mother Bear disappears beneath the water. And when she comes up again, she's holding a big salmon in her mouth. Wow, she's a good fisher bear. Baby Bear comes swimming excitedly, but Mother Bear says, go catch one for yourself. Oh, how about if your mother would say that to you when your mom was making her dinner? Go make your own dinner. <laughs> I guess that's the way it is in the bear world, right? Baby Bear chases the salmon as fast as he can, but try as he might, he cannot catch them. They are too fast. And look, they jump out of the water. 
That's it. I tried diving just like mommy did. So he's going to dive deep. It's a strange world beneath the water, wavering and sparkling and blue in the moonlight. Baby bear comes as close to the salmon, but they and they won't swim away. Hmm. Maybe they don't see him. Oh, he yeah. caught it! Oh, can you see? Yeah, he caught one of the fish. And then my funny yeah. There he is. Baby bear climbs out of the river, proudly holding a fine big salmon in his mouth. And he shakes himself all over. Did you ever see a dog shake off? They spray the water everywhere. That's what's happening here. Baby bear eats salmon for the first time in his life. How good it tastes. It, the salmon that he caught all by himself. On the river behind him, the moonlight sparkles and swirls on the water. And it becomes a big fish. Doesn't it look like a fish with an eye there and a tail? The way the water makes it change its reflection. The lively little bear decides to catch it. Oh, he thinks it's a real fish. And he dives in. Mommy, look, there's a great big fish here. He's in the water calling to his mommy. Silly little bear, that's just the moonlight on the water, Mother Bear says with a gentle smile. And when the moon has set and the night sky is full of stars, Baby Bear is back in the den, sleeping by his mother's side. He has a dream about a big, big fish. Twinkling like the stars, the fish swims slowly through the night sky. Oh, and that's the end. So maybe he's hibernating now and having dreams of salmon. I wonder if we'll dream of salmon tonight. <laughs> well, so that's a that's a the bear's autumn. Hope you like that one. And um, I guess that's about all we have for today, guys. So thanks Hi. for thanks for joining me. It's so nice to have you. Bye, and, bye Riley. I hear you. Bye. 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 Bye, Vienna. It's nice to see you. Bye. Thank you. Welcome. Bye.